Astaxanthin is a remarkable antioxidant that I've actually used for many, many years. And so what I wanna do in this video is share with you the remarkable health benefits of astaxanthin that you need to be aware of. And just as a short reminder, I actually stopped wearing sunscreen and I used astaxanthin to protect myself against sun damage. And also back in the day when I was playing soccer, I was using astaxanthin to improve my sprint times and my athletic performance and also to reduce my muscle soreness. And so in today's video, what I wanna do is explore the literature, the science, the benefits, and why astaxanthin could potentially deserve a spot in your supplement cabinet. So what is astaxanthin? Astaxanthin is a carotenoid, a type of pigment found in various organisms, including algae, shrimp, and salmon. It is responsible for the pinkish red color of these species. Astaxanthin is known for its potent antioxidant properties, which may help protect cells from damage and support overall health. Carotenoids are a large class of naturally occurring pigments that are responsible for the bright red, orange, and yellow colors in many fruits and vegetables. They play essential roles in photosynthesis in plants and have health benefits for humans, including acting as antioxidants and contributing to eye health. Some well-known carotenoids include beta-carotene and lutein. Astaxanthin can be consumed from both food sources and supplements. The most common and natural source for astaxanthin supplements is the microalga Haematococcus pluvialis, which is known for its high astaxanthin content. This is often considered the best source for supplements due to its purity and potency. However, with that said, the astaxanthin, which I think has the best results in the literature, is made in a laboratory using a complete chemical synthesis of the astaxanthin molecule and is shown to be more pure and even outperform algae-based astaxanthin. Astaxanthin from krill is also commonly used and there is also synthetic astaxanthin, however, this is generally the worst form as it has poor bioavailability and health effects. People most commonly associate astaxanthin with salmon and it can certainly is a good source. Wild caught sockeye salmon is shown to have the highest levels of astaxanthin with around 37 milligrams per kilogram of meat. Studies also indicate that astaxanthin content is much higher in fresh compared to packaged salmon. So why do people use astaxanthin? Well, people are using astaxanthin for many reasons, including antioxidant properties, helping with exercise performance and recovery, promoting health of our joints. It has anti-inflammatory effects. It also supports circulation. It has skin health benefits and it also supports brain function. Now there's a lot of new studies coming out about astaxanthin, which we'll be looking at into today. In fact, over 400 studies were conducted just in 2023. So if you have or do use astaxanthin, please drop a comment about your experience below. Now I will talk about the potential DHT lowering effects of astaxanthin later in the video, but also do let us know if you have experienced this side effect. So the DHT lowering effect may be a, an issue for some guys, but we'll get into it later in this video. Now, also let's get into the science behind astaxanthin. Now the beneficial effects of astaxanthin are actually attributed to its unique chemical structure, particularly the presence of conjugated double bonds in its molecular structure. Now a conjugated double bond is when a carbon atom has alternating single and double bonds with other carbon atoms in a zigzag pattern. This setup lets the electrons move around easily, which helps astaxanthin scavenge free radicals. Astaxanthin is also lipid soluble, so astaxanthin can pass into the cell membrane, helping to stabilize and protect against oxidative damage. Astaxanthin also has functional groups, which enhances its antioxidant capacity. Finally, astaxanthin has quite a unique chemical shape which allows it to protect against oxidative stress and inflammation. This also allows it to pass through the blood-brain barrier, which enables its cognitive benefits. Interestingly, there is some evidence to suggest that potent anti-inflammatory supplements such as vitamin C may negatively impact muscle growth in the long term. However, studies on whether astaxanthin hinders muscle growth have not found this effect. Now, what does astaxanthin stack well with? Well, firstly, astaxanthin is fat soluble. So it should be taken with or after a meal containing fats or potentially supplements like fish oils. If taken before a meal, it is shown to be absorbed at a much lower degree. And so astaxanthin may stack well with supplements that generally further potentiate its beneficial effects. For example, omega-3 fatty acids. 
Omega-3s can improve heart health and reduce inflammation. Together with astaxanthin, they may provide enhanced cardiovascular benefits. Next up, we have coenzyme Q10. Now, this particular antioxidant supports energy production in cells. When paired with astaxanthin, it may provide synergistic action as an antioxidant and support for heart health. Now, vitamin E and vitamin C are also powerful antioxidants which can help protect cells from oxidative damage, combining it with vitamin C away from workout times. This is really important to note. Finally, we have collagen. Collagen and astaxanthin may both help with skin health and can be taken together. For skin health, combining astaxanthin with collagen supplements may further enhance skin elasticity and hydration. Moving on, let's dive deeper into the benefits of astaxanthin for skin health. Because astaxanthin is such a popular supplement, there have been at least nine randomized human controlled trials looking at the impact of astaxanthin for skin health. This meta-analysis found that supplementation significantly restored moisture content and improved elasticity, but did not significantly decrease wrinkle depth. Importantly, the studies included in this meta-analysis were at longest 16 weeks, so consistent use of astaxanthin could reduce wrinkle formation. Now, what about how astaxanthin may actually improve cognitive function? There is mixed evidence about the benefits of astaxanthin for cognitive function, particularly for older adults and those with high oxidative stress. Research does indicate that astaxanthin may be beneficial for older adults at both reducing risk for dementia and Parkinson, as well as improving cognitive functioning. However, more research is needed. For example, this study found that researchers found that people with dementia have high levels of harmful substances called phospholipid hydroperoxides in their red blood cells. They tested whether taking astaxanthin supplements could help. In a 12-week study with 30 participants, those who took six or 12 milligrams of astaxanthin showed higher levels of astaxanthin in their red blood cells and lower levels of phospholipid hydroperoxides compared to a placebo group. This means astaxanthin might boost the antioxidant status of red blood cells and help reduce harmful compounds, which could be a step toward preventing dementia. However, more studies are needed and it does seem like there are potential limitations with current studies such as short periods of use, not verifying that astaxanthin is being properly absorbed and small sample sizes. It does seem like astaxanthin may have protective effects for cognition. Looking into how astaxanthin can improve joint health. There is good evidence that astaxanthin may improve joint health, particularly for people with osteoarthritis. Researchers in this study found that a gene called ASPO2 is higher in the joint tissues of patients with osteoarthritis compared to healthy individuals. In lab tests, they discovered that RSPO2 and inflammation increased in specific immune cells and affected cartilage cells negatively. When they added astaxanthin, it reversed these harmful changes in both immune cells and cartilage cells. In experiments with living subjects, injecting ASPO2 worsened cartilage quality, but astaxanthin helped protect the cartilage. Overall, the study suggests that astaxanthin can help reduce inflammation and improve cartilage health showing promise in managing osteoarthritis. What about how astaxanthin may impact osteoarthritis? Well, here's a clinical study. Another study indicates that astaxanthin in combination with krill oil and hyaluronic acid assists with joint pain. Krill oil, astaxanthin, and hyaluronic acid to help with osteoarthritis. Researchers conducted a 12-week trial with 100 participants suffering from mild knee or hip pain. They found that those taking the astaxanthin combination reported a much greater reduction in joint pain compared to those on a placebo. The pain score dropped significantly more in the astaxanthin group, and they also showed better overall joint function. Interestingly, fewer people taking the astaxanthin combination experience side effects compared to those on the placebo. So what have people said about their use with astaxanthin? Now the reviews for the astaxanthin I recommend is AX3, which is linked in the video description down below, are especially good, which is probably due to its enhanced bioavailability. This is a really important point to note is that not all astaxanthin products are created equal. Now, AX3 is the most potent astaxanthin on the market and is the best purity. And what's interesting about their website is they include the age range of reviewers and it seems like most of their reviewers are in the 45 plus age range. Now, Michael C noted less pain in his knees and joints and Terry noticed good results with skin health. 
many reviewers also noticed inflammation reductions. So what do the experts say about astaxanthin? Due to the length of time this supplement has been on the market, as well as the large amount of studies, it might be useful to have a listen to what some big names have or who have experience with this supplement have to say about astaxanthin. Now, here's what Dr. Mark Hyman and Max Lagavere say about astaxanthin. I think astaxanthin will become part of the dialogue around longevity. You know, there's a lot of talk around various other agents that have a lot of promise, you know, NAD precursors, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And, and, you know, we think astaxanthin should be right there in that conversation and at the forefront of it because it has these profound uh, impacts on, on aging. Uh, health span, lifespan, it's super safe, it's commercially available, you know, so it's accessible. You know, so this is something that, you know, if you can imagine, snap your fingers, everyone taking astaxanthin, you would have a much healthier society. Um, and yeah. so this is something that why wouldn't you do it? You know, if it's safe, it reduces oxidative stress and inflammation at this, you know, core center level. It, it's something that we frankly believe everyone, you know, should be taking. So we think that that's um, going to be the next steps is really, um, you know, making astaxanthin a household name and something that is associated with with longevity. I've been taking astaxanthin for like 15 years or yeah. so. Like I'm an early adopter, I guess. I don't know what it what it was about those, wh how I even stumbled on it to begin with, but yeah. I was just, the, the, the research was has is really compelling and there's a lot of research on it. Now there is a big question that's oftentimes discussed and that is whether or not astaxanthin does lower DHT with obvious symptoms. Now there has been some evidence that astaxanthin can reduce DHT levels. The first study that found that astaxanthin inhibited 5-alpha reductase in vitro. The second study, which was in humans, showed that a combination of astaxanthin and saw palmetto did lead to a decrease in DHT levels, as well as estrogen and an increase in testosterone. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you'd know that I'm a big fan of DHT and its effects. So the issue with this human study is that they also include saw palmetto, which may decrease DHT. So it's actually hard to untangle the different effects of astaxanthin and saw palmetto. Now it seems these effects may be potentially overstated, but please do drop a comment down below if you have noticed any typical DHT suppressive effects from astaxanthin. Now there are some comments on Reddit where a user has noticed a decrease in libido after taking it, and in a later comment noted that their libido did come back. Interestingly, of that four replies to the thread, no one else noted a decrease in libido. So it may be worthwhile trying astaxanthin and seeing if you actually experience this effect. Finally, we're looking at the dosages and safety of astaxanthin. Astaxanthin is considered very safe when taken by mouth in dosages from four milligrams to 12 milligrams daily for up to one year. Now make sure to stay away from artificial astaxanthin, which may be less safe. For optimal absorption and minimal gastrointestinal side effects, it is recommended to take astaxanthin with food. Now it is also safe to use as a cream for topical usage for up to seven days or as a powder for up to six weeks. Now some safety considerations, pregnancy and breastfeeding. Early research suggests that it is possibly safe in late pregnancy. Caution is still advised and also in bleeding conditions and looking at the potential side effects, generally well tolerated with side effects being very rare. They may include headache, dizziness, drowsiness, skin irritation, and gastrointestinal upset, which can be mitigated by taking the supplement with food. So that's today's video on a remarkable antioxidant, astaxanthin. As I do want to also outline, it also does confer some potential longevity benefits, some anti-aging properties, so again, if you did want to purchase astaxanthin, AX3 will be linked down below in the video description. It's the best astaxanthin on the market in my opinion. So definitely check that out if you do actually want to incorporate astaxanthin into your wellness regime. I'll see you guys in the next video.